Okay, tonight I am making a boche. I think you, you pronounce it, I'm not sure. It's a caramelized honey mead. Um, so I boiled uh, 2.15 kilos of one of my darker honeys um, and, and boiling honey makes it even darker and thick and caramelly. Um, so that's it in the saucepan there. And um, it expands five times the size of the honey you've put in so you've got to put it in a big big pot um, and it's quite hard to know when to stop because it foams up and you can't see the darkness of the honey underneath um, and you're trying to get a really dark nice really super caramel honey but this is pretty caramelly it's um you can see it's like not really dropping much um, so now I'm going to use this ca this uh, caramelized honey to make my must which is um, 2.15 kilos of honey to one litre of water. Um, and then I'll show you what happens next. Okay. I let my, um, my caramelised honey completely cool. And then I, when I add the one litre of honey, uh, of water, sorry, um, I need to just really gently heat it only a little bit, enough to get the honey dissolving into the water and then it's got to cool back down to 26 degrees so that when you put it in your demijohn it doesn't um, kill the yeast when you add the yeast to it and so this this process here is making your must which is just your honey and honey and your water or your honey and whatever flavors you're going to do okay you can see that's much more watery now so it's just a thin sort of liquid um, so I've completely sterilized my demijohn and anything that touches it and my airlock as well and the bowl. Um, so what I'm going to do now is pour this because it's cooled down um, to 26, around 26 degrees. I'm going to pour that into my demijohn and then I'm going to... Add my yeast. Now I've got mangrove jacks, just all styles of mead mead yeast because I'm a learner. Um, and it's 10 grams, which is the right amount for this recipe. I'm going to put a little bit less than a, that in this time because last time it bubbled over the top, so I obviously had a bit too much for the honey I put in. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll pop that in and then you give it a shake before you put your. your yeast in. should be about three litres going in because you've put 2.15 of honey and one litre of water so far. Um, so yeah, you just need to get it on in there. Okay, Norma says that you want to give it a good shake when you've put the must in before you put the mead in. Mead is not in yet. I mean the um, yeast is not in yet just the must you want to really aerate it like give it a good five minutes ten minutes of shaking whatever your arms can put up with make sure you seal the cap first because it's going to go everywhere okay so i've topped up my mead with um, purified water um, and obviously to make your must it should be with purified water as well um, and I, as you can see I gave it a good good shake I'm going to give it another good shake too just to get a lot of air in there then we're going to pop the yeast looking good now you can see it's got good swirl there's bubbles coming up alright so lots of air rising up I'm going to pop the yeast in now Okay. Now, like I said, I'm not going to put all of mine in because I can always put a little top up in the in the secondary filter um, because I had an over it burst its lid and went all over the kitchen bench last time, so I must have had too much of something in, and I'm still learning about my process, so I might have shook it to at the wrong time or who knows. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, at least that's not the whole thing. Alright, so now you've just got to give it a little... You're supposed to use a, um, a long spoon to give it a good stir for five minutes, says the book. So I'll do that. Uh, do that. So there's my yeast floating everything down there. Now it's probably um, going to take a few minutes to start bubbling. And I found last time with this caramel honey mead, mead that it did take um, a bit longer than I thought and I ended up going to bed and I think then, then it really kicked off through the night and overflowed out my airlock. Um, so that was not ideal but yeah so normally uh, with the or ancient orange mead that I did it started bubbling straight away um, but with this one it might need about half an hour or so. Okay, it was a bit hard to do this with one arm, but um, so I just um, siphoned a little bit of my starting mead out with the siphon, popped it on the refractometer. Still haven't worked out if one's broken or not, or I might be doing it the wrong way. Um, and you look through the eyepiece, and it tells me that my starting gravity is 1.115. So to keep a track of things. I'm going to stick my brew day and my starting gravity on my bottle and then it still hasn't started bubbling yet but it will and then um, when I do my first test probably uh, in a few weeks they give it out you can measure it again and um, yeah just keep doing that um, it can sit for a few months or if you add nutrients and all sorts of other things, it'll um, help the yeast to go a bit faster and then you can probably have it for Christmas. Okay, this is the next day and you can see I'm, it's taken a while. I'm starting to get the odd bubble. And that'll just build up until it's really gone gangbusters. I don't have a little insect um, thing like I do on this one because the fruit flies are always trying to get at it so I've just used one of my mini wax wraps for bottle tops just loosely on there to stop the you don't want any insects or any anything at all getting into your mead it's called an infection um, and it's an infection to your mead not you as a person but um, this stopper was a bit loose and it was pushing itself up um, and therefore this wasn't sealed properly and I think that's why my mead didn't start bubbling straight away but it is now you can see it's got hopefully you can see there's little you can probably only see my reflection <laughs> on the camera but there is you can't really see but there is tiny little bubbles coming up so the pressure is starting to mount and now we wait <laughs> 